Hi, this is another video from Performance Line Bearings and as a e-bike motor repair specialist we've been um, noticing on the forums and obviously watching the motors come through that there are some common issues with um, you know what, what fails in the motor and what doesn't. In this video we're going to take a look at the Bros motor. We're going to see what fails, why it fails and if there is anything that can be done about it. There are some modifications that can be done and we can do an upgrade so we're going to have a look and uh, show you what was what. We're going to look at a selection of Bros motors starting from the early um, C161 as it's called, the um, T motor. Um, we've got a 972 um, C972 uh, S motor and we've got an S mag. Uh, we won't have to take them all apart because essentially the parts that we're looking at are identical in all three motors. Um, so probably the most common one out there at the moment that's out of warranty that's failing is the Bros S. Uh, this is one that's uh, very common in the specialised bikes for example and used mainly for the off-road bikes. So we'll, we'll have a look at this one, we'll concentrate on that and uh, we'll see what this is like inside. So we've now got the crank assembly out of the motor and the reason we chose this motor was because the customer reported that he had cracking and popping sounds and that his pedals were slipping and this is a, a very common scenario to the a failure of the actual sprag clutch bearing that's inside here on the crankshaft. So we'll go ahead and strip this down, we'll bring the camera in a bit closer so you can have a good look and we'll see what we find when we take it apart. In fact, we can already see a telltale sign This is one of the plastic bars from in between the sprag bearing and um, so we know what we're going to find in here. On first look this might seem alright. If I can get the camera to uh, focus. See that sprag there has folded over, it's actually laying on its side. The reason it's able to do this um, is each sprag sits in a plastic holder and there's a plastic bar between each of the bearing sprags as they're called and on this side they've broken away. So because these sprags have broken away, it's allowed more room for these teeth to move around. So instead of just coming up against each other, they can flip over and jam, which is your cracking and popping sound. And then eventually when enough of them fail, you lose drive altogether. Um, so we'll have a look at the solution for the crankshaft sprag bearing in a minute. Um, what we need to do first is just have a look at the other sprag bearing which is the pulley sprag bearing. Um, and this is the one that transmits the drive from the electric motor to the crankshaft. So basically um, these can feel great. So that, that, that feels like there's nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but what we don't know is what condition it's in because if it's starting to fail then that's when we get the problems. So what we've got to do is press this apart and we'll do that on the shop press. 
So now you can see the second sprag bearing for the pulley. Um, it looks pretty good, but the only way to really check them is to just pick at each tooth. And basically, these, these little feet shouldn't fall out the bearing. So if one of these drops out, we know that the, the little bar in between has broken and it's free to fall out, which means it's free to move. Okay, I, I would check these individually, every single one, but for the purpose of the video, this is okay. Um, I think this bearing is going to be okay anyway, so we haven't got a problem there. Although, if we wanted to upgrade it, we'll change it out. I just bought this motor in so that we can um, have a look at uh, some of the components on the outside to get some perspective of what we're looking at on the inside. Um, so on the early motors, um, Bros didn't have a seal on the right hand crankshaft bearing and obviously the right hand crankshaft bearing is not watertight so it used to let water into the motor. They fixed that by introducing this um, dust cover basically uh, but it does does work quite well the as you can see on the early on the later motors these have all got this cover on them but whether it's a late motor or an early motor there's still the issue of the gap between the crankshaft and the sprocket carrier so this allows the crankshaft to move independently of the sprocket carrier but it also lets water into that area there if we have a look inside there, you can just make out that there's a needle roller bearing in there. And if we have a look inside the needle roller bearing, if it will focus, come on, there are two rubber seals. Now unfortunately these are more designed to keep grease in than they are to keep water out. So the water tends to come into the bearing and then what it will do is destroy the bearing and then once the bearing gets enough play and wear in it, it will go through the other side of the bearing and into the motor. Unfortunately while the water's inside this bearing, it's, this, this bearing is running against the crankshaft and it sits there on the crankshaft. So as you can see, it damages the bearing surface of the crankshaft. And obviously if we put a new bearing on top of this damaged bearing surface, it's not going to do the new bearing much good at all. So we have a fix for this, um, which again we'll look at when we put all this back together. So. We're going to come back to the sprag clutch bearing and just want to talk about why this fails. This, this one's the crankshaft bearing and uh, we've got the other one in the pulley, uh, drive pulley which does the same thing. Uh, basically these bearings in particular are designed to take 240 newton meters of force and technically that's more than most or any cyclist is going to put through the pedals. but. What, uh, what we have noticed is that these aren't too much of a problem in road bikes but put them in a mountain bike and they tend to be a bit fragile. And the problem with this is uh, normally pedal strikes. So if you can imagine your weight, the weight of the, the bike and you hit a rock or a, or a tree stump and it, the, it stops the pedal instantaneously, all the force has got to go through that bearing. Um, there's also a lot of momentum and kinetic energy going on in the motor and again all that force when everything stops goes through the bearings. So that's, uh, that's I think the main reason why these bearings are failing. Um, so what's needed is an uprated bearing and finally we have one. So as you can see it's got much bigger sprags and it's also got much wider bars in between each each sprag and um, this will allow it to transmit the force through the bearing uh, without snapping the bars in between which will then stop the the sprags actually flipping over so 
this is going as part of our upgrade package and we're going to be doing um, upgrade for, for these motors with extra sealing and uprated bearings especially for the earlier motors uh, bros have changed this in 2021 so we can look after the older motors leading up to that time so we're going to have a look at some of the other stuff we do so we'll get this fitted in back in the motor and we'll come back in a minute so We've replaced the sprag bearing inside the pulley assembly and as you can see we've got our new upgraded bearing in there all nice and greased up ready to go and now we're going to replace the needle roller bearing and add the seal uh, to upgrade this assembly which is the sprocket carrier and torque sensor assembly. So we need to push out the old bearing first So we push the bearing out and um, the next job is to put a seal in before we put the new bearing back in. So there wasn't a seal in there before, only the ones that it was relying on inside the actual, uh, inside the actual bearing itself. So as I say, we're going to put a, lip, a single lip seal inside the housing first with the lip pointing outwards. We're not worried about contamination getting out of the motor, but we want to stop contamination getting in. So once the seal's fit and seated, we use a depth tool to ensure that the needle roller bearing doesn't go too deep and crush the seal. So we've got our new bearing and seal in there and this, this works, we've been using this for a couple of years now and it really does stop the water or any contamination, grit, dirt, getting into that secondary bearing and then destroying your very expensive crankshaft. So we've got our bearing in there, we've got our bearing in there and now we're going to put these two assemblies back together. Simple as that, you can see that now working, turns freely that way and is locked going forward. Um, we've got a new blue sealed bearing to go uh, back on the top. Now these bearings don't go down until they stop, um, they go down a certain depth. So we're going to use a depth tool just to set that properly. So that's the bearing set, that's the free play on the pulley wheel set. And now we put the crank assembly together with our new crankshaft sprag bearing on there. Before you do that, don't forget to put your wave washer in. And we can see that this now turns and locks, turns and locks. So that's our crank assembly all back together. Now we've just got to put that back in the motor itself. Okay, so we're going to put the crankshaft assembly back in in a moment. Um, but before we do this, uh, we have a, obviously another issue here, which is the left hand crankshaft bearing. Now if we have a look at the outside of a motor with a crankshaft in it, again 
although it's only a small hole this is where um, water can gain access to the left hand crankshaft bearing and the bearing itself has a um, a seal with a lip around the outside now the lip around the outside is not to stop water getting into the motor it's to stop the bearing turning in the case so what happens unfortunately is that lip actually comes up against that casing and what that does is it collects water in between the case and the bearing and the water just sits in there and then it can seep through the bearing over time so we're going to do two things to this but the first thing we're going to do is put some waterproof grease in there so that when we press the the crankshaft assembly in with the bearing on the back that will fill that gap up with waterproof grease so we now have our grease at the bottom of the motor housing and we put our crankshaft bearing on top of that As you can see, got a bit of excess grease come out. And now what we're going to do, now that's packed with grease, is put on an X-ring seal that will sit just on the lip of the crank. Okay, and that totally seals that side of the crankshaft and then that will be held on when the crank arm goes on when that's tightened up it will come up against the seal there won't be any friction but it will stop any water penetrating or, or dirt or dust penetrating that area so now what we'll do is um, we'll just make sure we peen the bearing in so that it can't come out again and um, we'll start building up the belt area. In the new belt kit you get a new tensioner screw for the belt tensioner and basically because the torque setting of this is so low you need to clean all the old thread lock out of the belt tensioner hole before fitting it. So basically I just run a tap through that to clear that. So here's our new 2020 belt all greased up. Nice new gasket to go on. Supply with the O-ring to stop this bearing spinning in the case. Damp the noise down a little bit. So, we'll cut back once the cover's screwed down. So, we've got a cover on, 
screws in, torqued up, everything's tight. Now we've got to tension the belt. Now we've just put a bit of lock tight. And tension it. Um, so now we can seal up this side of the motor, we've already got our extra seals inside, um, so this part is now sealed from within but we're going to go one step further. So we've got our new motor seal, comes in the belt kit, just a little bit of grease on the back so it doesn't squeak. Fit that on nice and then we're going to run a little bit of waterproof grease around the housing opening. And then put our other X-ring seal. over the top of that. So again when the, when the pedal arm goes on um, that will stop contamination getting into the area. Now the only other part of this motor that does suffer um, particularly on the specialized bikes is this area of the ECU. Um, so these two screws go into uh, the motor housing but it's not solid here, so that any water getting through these two screws goes straight into the ECU area. Um, we'll get one of those to show you. Here's what we're talking about with the, um, the actual circuit board area of the motor and why it gets dirt in there or gets water in there. Um, basically where this is situated on the bike, the mud builds up around this area at the front of the motor and basically it stays wet and it just you know it stays wet for months on end and the water just seeps in through the screws and this shouldn't be a problem because um, if you can see on this end if we put the screw through there it should be sealed by the gasket so any water leaking in past the screw head should be stopped by the gasket and that's how gaskets work um, if we put the screw in this end, it goes through the gasket, but underneath the gasket, there's nothing. So the water that's coming down the screw threads can just enter into the circuit board. And as you can see, it hasn't done this circuit board any good at all. So all we need to do is just seal the screw. Then we just take the screw out, put a bit of sealant around the head of the screw. screw back in and now no water is going to get into the ECU. To recap this is now a performance line bearings upgraded bros motor that should last a hell of a lot longer than the standard one if you're working in rough or difficult terrain. Um, this is also a fix for obviously dry dusty areas as much as it is for wet areas all the places that water can get in um, fine dust can get into. Um, so just to recap, we've uprated the sprag bearings, we've uprated the drive belt, we've put an extra seal in um, 
just behind the uh, the needle roller bearing. We put two outer seals on the crankshaft. We put waterproof grease between the um, the, the left hand crankshaft bearing and the cover, and we've put sealant underneath the head of the screws on the ECU. This doesn't make this 100% watertight, it doesn't mean you can now go through um, you know, very deep water that comes over the top of the motor, it doesn't mean you can pressure wash your motor, but it does mean that through normal riding, through puddles, through floods, etc, um, you're not going to do half as much damage as you did. You're going to get away with pedal strikes, um, and like I say, the motor will should now take a bit more abuse than it did before. So this is a service offered by Performance Line Bearings. You can find this on our website www.performancelinebearings.com We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.